How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Mojo Group. Mike here. So we are now at the tail end of this mosaic program that I brought to you guys just a couple of months ago. And to my shock, the FAA actually moved a lot faster than we thought. Now, keep in mind, these are still proposed rules and our hope is that they will come in effect sooner than later. So if you remember from the previous video, uh, some of the things that were suggested uh, with the mosaic is that one, they would increase the weight limit in the light sport category. And I really focus on light sport and experimental airplanes because that's what I've personally flown for the most part, but also these are considered the entry levels for airplanes. For any new pilots or old and advanced pilot, if you're looking for entry level airplanes, chances are you're looking in the light sport category and or you're looking for a more affordable experimental airplane. Now, the correlation between the two is that if there is an increase in the weight limit for light sport, it means that more experimental planes would now be considered or can now be considered light sport aircraft, meaning they're fully certified and you can get a bunch of savings with insurance, with the cost of the airplane, yada, yada, yada. We'll get into more of that later in the video. First, let's talk about what was proposed this last July at the EAA Oshkosh event. Again, for the purpose of this video, we're gonna focus on the entry-level airplane, light sport aircraft and experimental aircraft. So this is what's new about the Mosaic rules. Number one, there is going to be a weight increase. Now, currently the weight limit for light sport aircraft is 1320 pounds, meaning everything, including human everything, the gross weight has to be 1300 or 1320 pounds. The FAA is now proposing that we can increase that, not just by a little bit, <laughs> but literally by 100%. So with the new rules, now light sport aircraft can be up to 3,000 pounds. That's just, that literally means an RV-10 could possibly be a light sport airplane, right? With the gross rate. A DA-40 could possibly be a light sport aircraft. Now you're looking at your Cessna 172s, even Cessna 182s can now be certified as light sport aircraft. So that's the first thing, the weight limit increase. Number two, you have now higher speeds. So again, with the light sport aircraft category, you are limited in just about everything. Weight, how many people you can carry, also how fast you can go. So currently a light sport aircraft cannot go faster. By rule or by law, you're, an aircraft that's light sport cannot go faster than 120 knots. The FAA is not proposing that, sure, you can go fast, and not just by a little bit, but again, double, double the speed. So a light sport aircraft can now go up to 250 knots. Insane, okay? Don't mind me smiling through this whole thing because I'm just, I'm getting excited. Number three is now light sport aircraft can also have retractable landing gear. Now this already was a thing. There are special light sport aircraft, like if you have some, uh, some uh, seaplanes, those some of them have retractable landing gear so you get a special certificate for them and so this is technically not new but now it can be more widespread so when you have an airplane like the new jmb which they have a light sport version but the retractable landing gear in that airplane really puts it out as an experimental aircraft but guess what that same airplane now with the retractable landing gear can be certified as a light sport aircraft. For a lot of airplane manufacturers, this is great news because not only do you get out of the gauntlet of being limited with your airplane sales and production, but the airplane that you've built on paper can now move away from being non-certified to being certified. Now, what does all of this mean anyway? This is what we care about as pilots. First, let's go back history lane. When you think about the light sport category, the consensus is that this new category, and by new, I'm talking about 10, 20 years ago when it first came out, it was about getting more people into flying, meaning now we can produce more affordable airplanes for pilots to get people excited and get in the cockpit. 
Unfortunately, that really hasn't turned out to be the case because light sport aircraft now cost just as much as some certified airplane or experimental airplane. And you can blame that on different things. But the fact is an aircraft being light sport doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to cost you less money. What I have personally observed is that the light sport category was never really created to limit the aircraft. It was created to limit the pilot. That's what this whole thing is about because as a sport pilot, you don't necessarily need a medical, right? And that's why the FAA tries so hard to limit everything else you can do with the aircraft. So in a way, 10, 20 years later, we're sort of reversing some of these limitations. But I want you to understand that, that this category was initially created not to limit the aircraft category. It was lim it was created to limit the pilot and what the pilot can do. Even with these new rules, the pilot gets a lot. Trust me, we, we get a lot more, but also there are still some limitations that are there. But this is what we care about most. And that is the cost. Everything I just spewed out, this is how it's going to translate to the pilot, the end customer. When now you have some experimental planes or even some certified, already certified airplanes considered light sport, you may get some savings with insurance. Insurance is probably one of the biggest obstacles in owning an airplane. Trust me, I've been doing this for quite some time and I've seen a lot of airplanes die in the water because of insurance. A great example is the Pipistrel Panthera. I was super excited about this airplane too, but I can really consider a Pipistrel Panthera now a failure, at least in the US market. And it's a failure because to get into this aircraft, the insurance is just crazy. Insurance companies don't want to touch it. That's one. But also they require you to be a lot more advanced as a pilot before you can get into a Pippa Show Panthera. So if you've ever thought, why haven't you seen a lot of Pippa Show Panthera flying? That's because insuring the aircraft became almost impossible for a lot of buyers who were looking to get into a Pippa Show Panthera. Now, given these new rules, this may change, but as we know, Pippa Show have also exchanged ownership. So we don't even know if the Panthera is going to be here in a year or two. So insurance is perhaps one of the biggest problems that is going to be solved with these new rules. Now, I say that very lightly because technically the FAA doesn't control the insurance market. The insurance market controls the insurance market. But historically, light sport aircraft tend to have lower insurance rate on them. One, because they're certified, but also they're limited. <laughs> but now removing those limitations may I don't know, change the premium prices for these airplanes, but more than likely it's going to reduce insurance for a lot of experimental airplanes like the Panthera or even the JMB and some of these new planes that we've all been excited about for so many years. Beyond the cost of insurance, you have the bigger cost, which is the purchase price for these airplanes. Now there's been conversation about, well, how will these new rules affect the price of an airplane. Except you've been living under a rock, you know that for the last two years, the price for buying an aircraft has just been astronomical. Double in many cases. Even for your 50, 70, 70 year old planes, the prices have doubled overnight. Now, with these new rules, is there going to be a change in price? For a lot of pilots who are looking to get either their first or second airplane, they're hoping that these new rules will cause one higher demand, but more so that demand is now going to be spread out with a lot of options. So that means that some airplanes that have more demand right now would have less in the future because now you have a lot more options to pick from. This is what I think will happen with the prices of airplanes, more so the prices of light sport airplanes. Fortunately, I don't think these new rules will make the prices of airplanes go down. Let me explain. If you think of your average light sport aircraft today, you're paying anywhere from $220,000 to $300,000, in some cases over $300,000. Part of that is the components that these planes are built from, and then you have shipping and logistics, yada, yada, yada. But if you buy a brand new light sport airplane today, chances are you're gonna be paying $200,000 or more for that airplane. Now, if these rules were already in effect today, 
we're hoping that that same plan that cost two hundred thousand dollars would now cost say a hundred and fifty or one hundred and twenty thousand chances are that is not going to happen the reason being the market let's get into a bit of economics here and i'll try to keep it as simple as possible when you think of just your normal market you have supply and demand now the u.s market is considered a free market when you look in most industries including the aviation industry you would see that each industry has little pockets that dominate right so you'd have generally one or two brands that would take more market share than most. And that has to do with desirability, meaning the end customer likely would desire one brand more than the desired 10 other brands. Great example is Cirrus Aircraft. For years, and I mean years, Cirrus SR22 or SR20 has been the most expensive single engine airplane. Now, do you think with all the ups and downs in the economy and in the aviation industry, you would think, well, demand should probably go down and Cirrus will sell less aircraft. It has yet to happen. If anything, Cirrus aircraft continues to go up in price. Even as much as a lot has changed, including these new rules that are passing, you still have a level of desirability for this one brand. You can argue the same thing for a Cessna or a Piper or any other airplane brand you can think of. When you, the customer, desires one brand over the next, it doesn't really matter if there are 10,000 other options. Chances are you are going to pay the money for the brand that you desire. And like any other things that you can buy, an airplane is not a necessity, right? It's not like a car. In many cases, you need a car to get you from place to place. For GA pilots, you buy an airplane not because you need one, is because you have the extra income to buy the airplane. And chances are, when it comes time for you to make that purchase, you're going to buy the airplane that you truly desire, not some off-brand or one where you feel like you're compromising too much. Now, the great thing would be that you would have all these different options available. So my point being is, because that one factor still exists and will continue to exist, chances are the prices for a lot of the airplanes that are currently in the market will not change. That is just my personal opinion. Now, the cost of owning and or operating these airplanes may change. We may get some savings that way, but I don't see all of a sudden light sport airplanes becoming less expensive to buy. You will have more airplanes to choose from and if people are selling or there are a lot more used airplanes in the market, and of course, if the market is flooded with a ton of airplanes, then that could drive the price down. But again, I've been doing this for quite some time. And the only thing that I've seen is that the prices keep going up. And I say that to say this for a lot of you who are watching this video right now, if you've been in the market to buy an airplane, more particularly to buy your first airplane. Guess what? You don't want to wait. <laughs> if you can afford to do so right now, you probably want to get that airplane right now. If you're waiting and saying, oh wait, once these rules pass, then I'll get some savings. Chances are you will not. I spoke to a pilot recently who wanted to get a Cessna 150 like two years ago, three years ago. That plane at the time cost like 15 or 16 grand. Now that same airplane costs more than double. You're looking at 30, 35, $45,000 for the same Cessna 150. My recommendation to you is if you're looking to get some cost savings because of these rules, I wouldn't put a lot of hope on that. And honestly, I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. But one of the greatest positives that comes out of this is that you will have more options as a buyer and you would have less limitation on what the aircraft can do. Now, the one thing FAA did leave in this rule is that light sport airplanes, or more so sport pilots, are still not allowed to carry more than one passenger. Doesn't matter how many seats you have, you're still limited to one passenger. You can go faster, you can probably carry more load, but you are still limited to carrying one person. That's not really much, because guess what? 90% of the time, it's just you find the airplane. 
Anyway, that's my spiel for today. I am super excited to see all of these actually go into effect. I'm curious what you think and if you can add more information below. And also, for again, for those of you who are looking to buy your first airplane, I'm curious what you're thinking in terms of waiting or pulling the trigger now. Make sure you let me know in the comments below. All right. Thank you all so much for watching. Again, my name is Mike. If this is your first time, be sure to subscribe to the channel with the notification bell on and I will catch you on the next video.